So, welcome to my talk. If everybody's ready, uh, especially if the video is ready. Um, this talk originated only as a couple of slides that AMD asked us for that basically showed how GCC 8 was doing, especially comparing it to other compilers. Um, necessarily, or, or however, we then expanded it a little bit for AMD and then ex I expanded it a little bit more for this occasion. And I will be going through the most notable improvements on the spec suit, spec benchmark suit that GCC 8 and a little bit also GCC 7 had, uh, show you why that was happened and then we'll get into the comparisons as well. <clears throat> so, right, GCC 8 was released this spring and uh, together with many various usability and language improvements, it also has quite a few optimization improvements. When we were looking at the results of various benchmarks, it was very, very nice to see a lot of green bars, a lot of improvements. It was, you know, we, we believe that it's a really, really nice release. And this talk specifically will uh, look at the performance evaluations that we get when we benchmark uh, the binaries created by GCC 8 um, on a Ryzen machine. And using the industry standard spec benchmark, I uh, do not know whether you're familiar with it, but uh, it is a benchmark that's, you know, be, that is very widely used in industry and academia. However, it, it is a benchmark that was originally created to uh, evaluate performance of computer systems and the spec uh, CPU, spec int and spec floating point in particular that we'll be using was created to evaluate systems, not necessarily only compilers. So in order to evaluate mainly compilers, we tweaked it a little bit. I'm saying this and I want to have this on the slides just you know to let you know that we have violated a few of the rules of how you you know, we're supposed to measure these numbers. Nevertheless, we still believe, uh, well, we, we not only believe that they st are still very good in, or, or, or very useful to compare compilers as opposed to system, but that actually improved, improved the situation. A um, Couple of more notes. Uh, all the performance numbers that you'll be seeing are single-threaded performance. We haven't looked at, uh, you know, running these things in parallel too much yet. And, um, all these numbers are the standard normal compilation that's been used for decades now. We do not use link time optimization. One of the reasons why we do not have LTO numbers in this talk is that I'm having a talk on LTO on Wednesday. It's the final talk or one of the two final talks of the conference. Um, and um, another one is that it makes the comparison slightly awkward sometimes. And we'll get to that later in my talk. Uh, these are just some of the optimization improvements that we have in GCC 8. We'll be going through some of them. Uh, basically, I just want to you know, show people that there are many. I've started a little bit late, so I'll skip that slide and get directly to the spec numbers. So, again, I do not know how familiar you are with spec, but how the spec numbers work is that either you can, of course, just time the benchmarks, and that's not normally we do, and normally, you know, when, when I generate graphs for my own personal consumption, smaller is better, but in throughout this talk, actually, you know, the, the, bigger, the, num the bigger numbers are the better ones, and that is because the spec standard defines uh, what they call a base performance uh, for each benchmark. And then uh, the score for each benchmark is just how uh, many times faster your system is compared to the base performance. Um, and then across the whole, whole, whole suite, um, what they do is that they calculate geometric mean, and that is the final and, and, and the most important uh, spec score. Uh, there are, of course, many more caveats, but we, we don't have to get into those for the pur um, purposes of this talk. Uh, and we can have a look at how GCC 8 is actually doing compared to GCC 7 and GCC 6. 
SPAC 2006 uh, was actually retired this spring. It is a fairly old suite published in 2006, and uh, the intent is to replace it with 2017, published last year. And nevertheless, SPAC 2006 is still you know, used in, in very many papers. We still measure it. We still, have a, you know, <laughs> we still look at it. Um, but it's been here for a long time because it is a, such an important benchmark. Compilers have concentrated on, on, on getting the numbers there, you know, getting, getting very good numbers there for a long time. So it is quite a bit of an achievement that we were actually able to improve. As you can see, all these numbers compare GCC 6, 7, and 8 in different colors. Um, and uh, we have a look at the performance of a binary compiled with optimization flag 02 and the generic tuning, where generic tuning means for basically any x, 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 x eighty six sixty four. I beg your pardon. And uh, then... Uh, we have a look at OFAST, which uh, is O3, but uh, better and more risky. It basically means that uh, we do not care about floating point mathematical pre precision as much, and, um, and w w which allows quite some aggressive uh, reassociation and, and, and other optimizations. And then we also have a look at the native um, performance, which means we look at uh, what the numbers look like when we tell the compiler, please generate code for this particular CPU for, for its ISA. And uh, as you can see, the spec 2006 numbers still improve, mainly in GCC 8, and uh, um, so, you know, th that was actually, we'll, we'll get to the reasons why later. Uh, but it is a you know nice thing to have. Spec 2017 numbers have improved even more, especially the integer numbers. One of the reasons is that the spec suite is fairly new. We, we've been we uh, have only started looking into it recently, and that means that there is still room for improvement. I will be mainly talking in the first part of this presentation about these six improvements. Um, the most impressive, at least in terms of numbers and graphs, is the HMMER benchmark. Uh, and uh, yeah, all of them improved at one or all optimization combinations quite a bit. And I will show you why that is, with the exception with WRF over there. But we will be talking about that when we will, comparing, when we will be comparing uh, the performance to ICC. So let's start with the most impressive one, and that's the, or the most impressive, impressive improvement, HMMER. Uh, I had it written down somewhere what it was doing. I thought that it would show me the notes, but, oh, I'm gonna make it, yeah. The HMMER is computational biology searches for DNA pattern. That's what the benchmark does, according to spec description. Um, <clears throat> it is written in C. This is the hottest loop. And the problem with the hottest loop is that uh, it would run much faster if it could be vectorized. Unfortunately, it cannot be vectorized. And the reason is, if you see the arrow, the line directly on the left, that's the main problem. Uh, the computation of the element K in the array DC directly depends on what we stored into that array in the previous iteration. And the, you know, when we, were, we are loading DC K minus one. And that means that unfortunately there is a cross iteration dependence. If we, if we attempted to do four iterations or two iterations or more iterations of that loop at the same time, we are not able to because we need the result of the previous one to calculate this one. So the reason, or, or, or the way around this, is to make the compiler automatically decide and discover uh, that it is beneficial to split, or distribute is the term that's often used, the loop into three. So the inner loop 
the transformation is you know outlined that's not you know it, it, it is not a source to source transformation of course but what happens inside the compiler is uh, that the loop is transformed as if it looked like something on the right uh, where we split the inner loop into three and um, under one condition that I'll get uh, that I'll describe in a moment, the first and the last loops are vectorizable and can you know the computations can be done in parallel and that's what also happens. Uh, the loop in the middle, well, bad luck. There is a, a cross iteration dependence that still runs in parallel. Nevertheless, as you can see, doing that really really helps a lot. Um, the one caveat that we still have to deal with is aliasing in C. We have to be sure that when we, you know, in, in the what is then the first loop on the top, we store it into MC, for example, and we have to make sure that that's not the same array as DC. All of these are. Uh, at the moment, I don't remember whether they're parameters, but I actually believe they're loaded from a structure. So the compiler does not really know what they point to. They could, in theory, point to the same memory, and uh, <clears throat> then you know that would also create create issues, and, and and vectorization would be illegal. So the compiler decides to version the whole thing. It introduces a runtime check. And uh, when there is, there are no alias issues, which in the benchmark is always the the, the arrays you know, uh, normally point to different memory. It runs the vectorized copy, and just in case that they, there was aliasing, where where the pointer is pointed to the same memory, it would run the old copy. So the picture on the right is the control flow graph. The various boxes are various bits of the loops, and you can see that at the top there is you know the, the second box from the top. Uh, splits the path into two different ones. It, what, what happens there is that there is this runtime introduced check for aliases for you know to, that makes sure that the pointers point to different places in memory. And if the check passes, the uh, path on the right is taken, and you can see that there are actually three loops. You can you know very nicely see it that these two or, or these three things are run um, as a separate loops and then later on in the compiler the first one and the last one get vectorized and that's why I get this very nice performance. Moving on, B waves is another benchmark which improved nicely. Uh, now we're looking at O2 generic performance however and it is a result of another fairly classic loop transformation. This benchmark is Fortran 77, numeric simulation of blast ways in 3D. And then I stopped copying, it was just, you know, it was fairly um, uh, involved description on the spec, benchmark, uh, spec uh, website. And uh, the trick to get better performance here is loop interchange. I do not know whether you're familiar with how, array, uh, how arrays look like in memory in Fortran. Um, basically, it's the other way around, um, and I mean multi-dimensional arrays, basically it's the other way around uh, than what you have in C. It is mostly, if, or if you want to access it, if you want to access the elements that go one after another in the memory, you'd better um, iterate the first indexed fastest, as opposed to C, where you would iterate, uh, you know, the increase the the last index fastest. But that's not what happens in the hottest loop of B waves, as you can see. If you can see it, I, I, I tried to make the font as big as possible. Um, the you know this is the hottest loop nest. If you look at the two innermost loops, you'll see that the M is the uh, iteration variable that uh, increments the fastest. Nevertheless, it is used only, you know, it, it is used mostly as the second index, whereas the, you know, the, the second innermost loop L is actually used as the uh, first index. So if we are careful and take care of the initialization at the beginning, what is uh, beneficial to do is to actually do a loop interchange, switch the two loops, and uh, have L 
um, you know, it iterate in the innermost loop and m in the second innermost loop, which will result into memory accesses that uh, the CPUs like much more and it will improve your memory bandwidth and you will get extra performance. And it is something that a compiler can do to, for you automatically. I'll fetch you the microphone. <laughs> You have to switch it up. Okay. Uh, just a simple question. All those optimizations are not uh, microarchitecture specific? It just compiler does? These ones are not. Okay. These ones are, yeah. But there's no code in GC that goes, if, then, do this. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's the whole native tuning. So when I, whenever I say that something is specific for native tuning, that means that you know that this is only, or you know that, that at least that there is that the architecture is considered. Of course, it can be you know we we can do the same transformation not just for Zen for other uh, for but also for other CPUs. Um, but this one is not. Uh, Let's go to the next one, and the next one is Exchange 2. Um, Exchange 2 is uh, Fortran 95 benchmark. After all the mm, you know, biomedical and, uh, and physics simulations, spec committee decided that they wanted to include a Fortran 95 Sudoku puzzle generator. The point of this slide is to show you a that we have you know, the performance has increased also in GCC seven and GCC eight, and then there are many many lines. I don't expect you to read it. What I want you to show you is that this is not a result of a single trick, but this is because we have uh, we you know added many smaller improvements. Um, let me say just a few things about the benchmark itself. It the, the hottest loop is actually. Uh, is nine levels deep, so so because the Sudoku thing is nine times nine array, um, the hottest loop had you know, had a loop nest of nine loops, and in the middle of those loops it was recursive, so a lot of lot of looping going on, and uh, GCC was tuned to be over aggressive on optimization, on, on you know attempting to optimize all these loops. But because there was a lot of recursion going on, uh, it and and the iterations number was not that big, it mostly actually had detrimental effect that 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 the optimizations were overactive. We you know they were creating very many spills of registers into memory and and, and back. Uh, there was too much unnecessary unrolling and so forth. Um, the main two areas where this was improved was profile improvements, so the estimate of, uh, you know, the, 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 even when you do not measure your profile, actually, by running uh, your, your benchmark and, and seeing what it does, it, there, there are still profile estimates going on in the compiler, so those were Im, you know, improved and their propagation was improved and how they work with was improved, uh, but also the optimizers were retuned for these large loop nests. That's how, how, how we got there. Another example of benchmark that improved that's a result of quite a few uh, smaller improvements is X64R, which is, uh, and I'm not sure whether it's a video coding or decoding library, um, but uh, it is a codec basically. And uh, mm, yeah, there were quite a few things improved. The biggest improvement actually already achieved in GCC7 was making sure that this code is not generated. Um, I wanted to put three lines in bold font, but it can't be seen on, on, on the slide, I'm afraid. Um, yeah, the first two instructions are just fun instructions. You can ignore them. I don't know why I included them in the example. Nevertheless, um, the, the, the second single move stores a value on the stack. The last but one instruction uh, stores, st stores a value just adjacent to that on the stack. And that's how we created vectors that were then loaded uh, and used as a vector operand in a vector instruction. Nevertheless, storing, uh, you know, putting things 
in smaller chunks into memory onto stack and then loading them in, 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 in one bigger chunk led to store to load forward installs within the CPU. That's not what the CPU liked. And uh, yes, it stalled a lot. We managed to actually use instructions to create vectors rather than rather than construct them on the stack. And that was uh, the, the one transformation that helped this benchmark most, even though it's definitely not the other one, uh, not the only one. And the final benchmark that I wanted to talk about is Parist. Uh, and uh, this is not code from Parist. If you think that this is just a matrix multiplication, you are completely right. It is just a matrix multiplication. But last year we discovered that it is really, really slow when we compile in, you know, in the native mode, when we tell the compiler to actually generate uh, eyes of horizon. And the reason was that the FMA, fused multiply and add instructions, that, which is an instruction that can multiply two numbers and then add a third number to it in quite, you know, in, in a fewer cycles than what to, you know, equivalent floating point um, instructions would take. They're not all that equivalent because the rounding is different there, but nevertheless, uh, in benchmarks, we do not care all that much. And, um, and uh, the, the problem is that if you have these FMAs and they feed into each other, like in this small loop, you know, you know the, the result of all these, uh, the, 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 the result is accumulated at XMM0, which is then uh, uh, used, how come it's not? Ah, uh, okay. All right, yeah, uh, yeah, that's true. So they, they are accumulated in XMM0, and um, that means that the output is also um, a dependence for the next FMA. And uh, what's happening in Ryzen, at least, is that FMAs are waiting until all the inputs are available, which means that uh, it waits until the previous FMA instruction finishes, where, whereas what you could actually do is already start with the multiplication. So when you do not create these FMAs in these conditions, um, if you, you can be doing multiplication and addition at the same time, whereas if you try to use this instruction, which normally, you know, which usually is a beneficial one, and, and, and measurably so, it introduces stalls. Now, We'll do a slight comparison with ICC. This was basically the results that inspired the original version of the, of the slides, where uh, some people at AMD asked us to put, up, yeah, to, to put together slides that would show that um, GCC on integer benchmark is actually better than ICC, the Intel compiler. Now, comparison, comparing with Intel compiler on Ryzen, and you know, may, you may think it is slightly unfair because the ICC, of course, does not optimize for AMD CPUs, and you are completely right. Nevertheless, uh, it is important uh, to have a look at, or, or not important, very often beneficial to have a look at what ICC does on the spec benchmarks, because the spec benchmarks require not, not only low-level optimizations for a given architecture, but also high level overall transformations like I showed you the interchange or distribution and things like that. Uh, and um, they are, you know, the, the compiler on, on, on the spec benchmark at least is a very good one. And, uh, you know, we, we, it, it is being able to do as well as they are means that we are able to do all these uh, important high level optimizations. So, uh, it is an interesting and useful comparison. Um, I want to point out here, is, though, again, that we did not use LTO, uh, link time optimization, for the you know for obtaining these numbers, and uh, uh, that hurt ICC more than GCC. There are two reasons for it. One is that sometimes they do not perform optimizations even, you know, without LTO, even though they are perfectly legal and we don't really understand that. Uh, the other one is that ICC 
um, does perform memory reorganization, stru data structure reorganization optimizations on some of the benchmarks where it takes, for example, uh, arrays of structures and turns them into a structure of arrays and 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 there's various you know fairly on, on one hand fairly impressive transformations on the other hand if you add a printf somewhere or something it, it, it is very fragile the whole thing can break very easily because some some address escapes somewhere and we believe that at some point probably um, changes should be made in the source co code rather than uh, you know, depend on the compiler to choose best data structures for your whole application. Nevertheless, it is something that we you know want to have a look into, and 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 may do some of it. But currently, we don't. But if you look at the overall spec uh, spec result, the integer ones are actually slightly better than ICC. I'll show you why. I, I, you know, it is probably more fair to say that we are on par. We are just as good. Um, now on the floating point, mm, on, we are either doing pretty much equally well or are slightly worse, and I will get to the main reason why in a moment. First, let me show you mm, individual scores of individual benchmarks, libquantum, uh, where we are doing much better than Intel on the uh, on, on the left is one of the reasons where Intel just does not pr perform all the optimizations they could without LTO, even though they could, uh, which is strange. Um, on the other hand, I believe that, for example, Exchange on the right is rather genuine, and they probably haven't had so much time to look into it. These are floating point numbers, and uh, there are some cases of that as well, one of these is Calculix, where we are without LTO, we are doing much better with LTO. It's the other way around, actually. Um, but the two things that I want to talk about and that we had a look into, and 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 and, and you know that explain what is going on uh, there uh, a bit more are on the left, Tonto is the fourth from the bottom, and WRF the second from the bottom. I do not remember what Tonto does. WRF is a weather forecasting benchmark, fairly huge, mostly Fortran benchmark. We had a look at the Tonto, and what you do when you compare, you know, when you want to figure out what's going on is, of course, you run perf and, and see where, where the um, application spares all the time. And, you know, the, if you look at the command, base is the GCC-generated binary, peak is the ICC-generated binary, and uh, the first four are from the GCC one. And uh, the, even and when you have a look at where ICC, the Tonto peak, spends most of the time, these are all symbols where more than 2% of the time uh, when, when running both um, uh, were, were spent, you see that it actually spends also most of the time calculating a complex exponential. And then if you have a look at what GCC does, it, it's calculating sine and cosine, which basically means that it's doing the same thing. And uh, that's the reason why uh, we thought, okay, this could be not actually a problem in the compiler, but a problem in, of, of how quick or slow it is on a Linux system with libm, you know, glibc uh, libm, um, how slow it is to calculate complex exponential. And uh, that's true. When we just, you know, we had the same binary, we just linked it with AMD libm, uh, AMD proprietary library, and we got the result that's in the middle, the yellow one. So, you know, huge improvement on the same binary without any change in what the compiler did. The good news is, uh, no, this is WRF. We did the same for WRF, and, uh, you know, with the libamp, we got quite some improvement, but we can still do better if we used Intel's vector math library, which allows uh, us to construe calls into uh, math routines that calculate, you know, um, the results for the whole vector lane, which is, you know, quite a few results in the, in the same call, uh, which allows factorization of loops. We got an even better performance that was already approaching the Intel's one. The good news is that if you, the previous data that are still there were measured on a leap system, when we actually updated the glibc to what you have in tumbleweed right now, you get the dark green one. So we are already better on, on tumbleweed uh, than the AMD libm. We still have to have a look into how to call into vector libraries. Currently libm 
uh, yeah, vector math routines. Currently, uh, Libem provides some. We have some. We just don't have a means of you know creating calls from Fortran into them, and we are working on that. But 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 the important news is that there there is progress, mostly contributed by ARM actually, uh, and uh, the situation has improved. So these are the numbers with the with actually newer GCC because they are much newer numbers. Uh, this is not GCC eight, but um, with the newer newer Libm, newer glibc on other on otherwise the same system. And as you can see, the Tonto and WRF, which were the motivational, you know, which were the motivation for the work of ARM and for their contribution, actually improved quite a bit. And uh, yeah, the overall score improved quite a bit. I do not have do not have overall scores for. Uh, spec 2017 floating point for ICC because I, uh, uh, I, yeah, the WRF, the newer version, didn't build with ICC. I don't know why. I haven't looked into it yet. But mostly you see improvements. Uh, none of them are quite as big as w, WRF, but it is nevertheless a nice thing to see. And as development in glibc continues, we might see another one. Uh, or more of them. Um, these are, very quickly, because uh, I started late, but now I'm running out of time as well. Um, this is comparison to Klong, uh, Klong 6. I, if anybody's interested, I can show you numbers from, you know, very recent numbers from Klong 7 as well, but they are very similar. Uh, of course, there are no Fortran numbers because LLVM does not have an official Fortran uh, front end yet. I have actually benchmarked Flung, the NVIDIA's uh, con, you know, front end, uh, Flung 5, and on current, more recently also Flung 6, but uh, they are always making wor they are always doing worse than what uh, GNU Fortran uh, produces. Um, but when we have a look at the CC++ results, uh, at O2, they are doing you know, very nicely. Uh, at 030 fast, ooh, we are still noticeably faster, but they are catching up. Um, so, yeah, when I'm, sometimes in things like spec, ben spec benchmark, that's because of you know the powerful optimizations like the HMMER uh, on the lower left graph. You can see that's where we are much better than Klang, and that's the reason is 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 that transformation that I showed you at the beginning of uh, my talk. Uh, but overall, we are mostly faster. The two notable differences are NAB, that we want to have a look into, and uh, that's a C++ benchmark from the spec 2017 floating point suite, and, uh, and benchmark that have s -jank in them. Um, so perhaps we should have a look what they're doing and, and see whether we could benefit from the same thing. And uh, that's basically my last slide. If you have any questions, I'll be very happy to answer them. No, no questions. So thank you very much for uh, your attendance. And uh, yeah, I'll be happy to answer any questions in the lobby or elsewhere later on. Thank you. <laughs>